I'm a program manager on PowerShell team and I've been doing PowerShell now close to nine years. So I've done remoting, I've done workflows and now I'm working on DSC. So if you have questions about remoting and workflows, you can ask me, but I would prefer to answer the DSC questions. Um, I think in nine years, this is the shortest slide deck I've ever created. And essentially my slide deck has three slides. So we'll just go on the code part of it because there's nothing more on the slides and I have to change the project to say duplicate okay so I'll and stop me raise your hands ask questions we'll handle them as they come uh, we'll start with a very simple hello world so here is hello world it doesn't do anything useful uh, it creates a new file and it copies files from a source location to destination. It's a simple DSC configuration. We call it the hello world configuration because it's the simple one. Uh, so any questions on that configurations? It's clear because we'll be using a bunch of time the same configuration. Okay, so essentially um, you have a configuration function. You if you dot source this file, this configuration function will be in your scope. When you call that function, it compiles into MOF. That's a simple pieces of, we'll, we'll dot source it, we'll invoke it, it'll generate the MOF. And you have, since I did not give a, no, a node name here, it generates localhost.mof. And notice, uh, that on the file resource, I had two properties, content and destination path, and in the second copy directory file resource, I had three. So overall, we, we specified five properties and nothing more. Now let's look at the file that got generated. Oh, property. So here is the MOF file. Um, there's a bunch of additional stuff that gets written to into it, and there are some comments which says where it was generated, who generated it, what time it was generated. And now if you look at the file resource, those two properties now became close to nine or 10. And you'll notice there's a resource ID, which is tells what was the instance name, what was the type name, content and destination is what you guys or user supplied. And then we add the notion of module, which module that resource is coming from, whatever the version of the module. In version two of DSC or in PowerShell v5, there's a new property called configuration name. Uh, it comes handy in partial configuration and under other scenarios, but essentially it says, what was the name of the configuration function that generated this piece of code? And what was the file name, line number, and so on? So you'll see both the things across these two resources. So that's the basic stuff. Once you convert into MOF, it's a data structure. We inject a lot of information for debugging, for internal use and loading modules and stuff. So that's part one. Questions? Good. So let's go to part two. So we had that file, or actually let me just open it again. So we compiled it, we generated the MOF, now we'll try to go and invoke it. And one of the thing is, right now there is no source folder. So to try to copy something from a non-existing folder to a destination, it should error out. So that is something we'll see next. <coughs> we'll just do start DSC configuration, specify the path where we generated the hello world configuration and apply it on local machine. And when you start running, it'll do the first part of creating the file, which is the new file resource. And it says new file was found, nothing needs to be done, it's skipped. And the source part must be accessible. The related is this file. So it tells you something. Um, now if you look at it, since it did not succeeded, if I look at the configuration store, that's the location where all the configuration store, that LCM stores it. 
C Windows System 32 configuration folder. If you look at there, you'll notice there is a pending .mav. And this is a change you will not see in version one of DSC or the 0.9 of the DSC. But once you install November update, November 2014 update for 8.1 and 2012 R2, you'll see that on failures, a pending .mov is left. And the reason we do it is when you apply, things might fail, you might not have network connectivity to a share or the permissions were not right on the share. But when consistency check happens after 30 minutes, 45 minutes, one hour, then it'll try to apply the same thing. So the DSC model is about eventual convergence. It might not converge now because of inter uh, intermittent issues, but <coughs> overall it will converge. And that was something we were not doing. And we said, oh, that's the wrong thing. It's a bug, we fixed it. So what its implication is, if you try to do a start again, it'll say, hey, there is a pending dot map on the system, use dash force. That way you are very clear, oh, something ran, it did not complete, I really, really want to override it. So that is a change of behavior after November update is if there was an error in applying a configuration, now you have to say dash force to make it happen. A question on that. Sure. Um, I've also noticed that if there's an error, it will not even continue doing the rest of the configuration. If there's an error in the middle of the configuration, even uh, if there's not it depends on it, it just will stop. Then that's a bug. Okay. <laughs> So if there's no depends on, the model is whatever can be done will continue to do, and if there's a dependency, then will not. It, I don't think it, <laughs> right, it should be, but it's a question, there's a the discussion right now in terms of we fix you know, how much we actually want to break. People, I think, have implicit dependency, and so we have to decide how much we want to quote, change that because when we first did with version one, it was one of the summers. Mm -hmm. And then there's a question if you randomize it, if we all stick the same one between one, one and one, two. And so there's some, we just need to, so I just, uh, I'm just saying, it's a problem. Yeah. You should note it and connect with an ICANN so that for those who didn't hear the speech. Uh, then, so um, uh, let me re we repeat the answer so people who are going to watch the recording is uh, there's an inherent assumption about in the order you give the configuration, but there were there was a specific bug that we fixed before V1 release that if a resource throws an error, then the non-dependent resource should continue to work. If that is not the case, then it's a bug, and you should file. And we, then we have to decide whether we can okay. fix it without breaking existing scripts or not. And whether the order should be maintained or not. So yep. So um, there's a, and now I'll go ahead and create that source directory so everything should start working. It copies, and now I'm going to do a forceful consistency check, but in the background, it'll happen every 30 minutes or 15 minutes. And actually, the minimum has changed to 15 minutes. It's not 30 anymore. Uh, earlier, it used to be 30. Now you can do 15. And now it goes through. Everything is done. Um, if you look at the configuration store, there's no pending dot .mav. There's some pending dot .mav dot temp. It should go away or if you clean the system. But that's not used anymore. So whatever your pending dot .mav was, that gets converted into current dot .mav. So your system is in the right state. Um, but so there are two ways. If you end up with a pending dot .mav, you have two ways. Either you can provide a new configuration by force and get rid, uh, override it, or there are new command lists called remove DSC configuration document, and it lets you say, I want to remove the document in a pending stage, or in the previous stage, or in the current stage. So this commandlet was added in again the <coughs> November update. So. It is in WMF5 for sure, but it was available even before that. So if you are using WMF4 and you have applied the November update, then you should have this command. Is that X script the only way to cause the pending one to get reran? 
No, so this uh, question was, is this the X command uh, called the pending to rerun? Yes, so this one essentially I'm calling the consistency engine manually right now uh, to say, go and apply it. So that's one way. The other way you can do, which is not necessarily the X, is uh, you can say start DSC configuration dash use existing. And it says whatever is there, just apply. There's difference. Use existing simply says whatever is there, just apply. It doesn't honor your monitor only, monitor, um, apply only, apply and monitor, and apply an autocorrect setting. It's forcefully applying whatever is there. Versus consistency check is whatever is there, run it and honor. If it says apply and monitor, then it'll just run, monitor, it'll not try to fix it. So there's difference between the start and the X version that I have here. So you can do wait dash verbose and it'll go and apply with you. Question. Isn't there, isn't there a scheduled check that runs the uh, DSC, uh, a scheduled task that runs the DSC consistency checker, and you, you should be able to invoke that scheduled task as well if you want So to. the question is, uh, can one invoke the scheduled task that DSC engine creates for consistency check? Yes and no. Yes on PowerShell version 4. No, because we got rid of it. Now we have internal timers, all those scheduled tasks. Those were internal details, and we never wanted those at the first place, but for some reason we had it. They are not there anymore, so if you are relying on them, don't. <laughs> uh, but yes, they were uh, scheduled task, two scheduled tasks before. If you do a reboot and for consistency check, they are gone. We have internal timers. Question? Is there a way to pause it then? Because before when I've got a machine, for some other reason, I need to tell it to stop doing any consistency checks, but I don't want to have to go through the whole process of resetting it up. Um, it would so either go in there and delete all the files or stop the task. Is there a way to stop it now, just to pause it? So, the question is, is there a way to pause the consistency <coughs> check? Um, there is no direct way you can change your consistency window to say instead of 15 minutes, make it 24 hours. That means the next 24 hours is not going to run. You ha do have a way to stop a running configuration. If there's a configuration running, you can use stop DSC configuration to say whatever you're doing, stop right now. But what you're asking is, can I say, don't run the next consistency check? Yeah, well, what I've done when we're troubleshooting is we just, we go to the, the task and we disable the task for a little while, fix the problems that it was recreating and then turn it back on. Okay, so what you thing is, oh, <coughs> so there is, Another way which we introduce in WMF5, which is refresh mode equals disabled. So we have push and pull, and then you can say disabled. When it's in disable mode, then LCM is not going to do anything. That means you cannot do a push, you cannot do a pull, then you can debug, you can do things that you want to, and then you put it back. That's what I'm looking for. Um, <coughs> and in this case, I don't have a pending, but you can still run the command. It doesn't cause any harm. It tells you uh, LCM did not find any pending configuration. So that is other part of it. Okay. Um, so in the last time when we looked at the localhost.mof or the mof file, um, we looked at those two resources. We add a lot, bunch of stuff. There is more addition which is over here, and this pertains to the document versioning. This con structure helps us say where this was machine was compiled, can it run against version one of the LCM or only in version two, and so on. So if you look at the first num line number 33, it says this document was compiled on DSC version two. Minimum version of LCM that can run this is version one. So there are a lot of new stuff here, but version one can still do it because it can ignore certain things which are added by the system. So we say compatible version additional property, oh my base resource configuration name. Remember we added this configuration name? If you send it to V1 system, V1 will look at the structure of MSFT file directory configuration object saying, oh, I don't have configuration name, error. 
but since it's added by the engine, we added this functionality to say, hey, engine can tell, the newer engine can tell older engine what things to ignore and not throw errors on. So does that only work in the November update then? Yes. So that work of engine being getting smarter was done in November update. The one that comes in 2012 R2. How, how far down level did the November update go? Question, how far down level the November update goes? Mm -hmm. Right now, it is only for Windows 8.1 and Windows Server 12, uh, 2012 R2. We are fighting a battle to get it down to Windows 7 all the way wherever WMF4 goes. <coughs> so if you can send me your business justification with number of servers and all, that helps. It's not like it's needed. We already got a lot of data, but the more data I throw at people who are building the packages for us, the easier and faster it becomes. Actually, I would suggest, I mean, we have a number of people sending us now email on this, I love it. Keep it coming. But I would actually suggest maybe we should file a connect bug. Okay, and a add. Connect feature, not a bug, excuse me, a feedback request, and just put your data in there. Here's my scenario, here's why I need it. So, uh, and then the more people just pile on and keep adding data and scenarios right in there, and I think that will help supply, that will have a central location to sort of pick up your, your feedback and you can... Uh, so people you can for, from a, so I, I'll repeat what Kenneth said essentially is, create a connect feature or connect suggestion, add your data there so all the people can add it, they can see each other's data, and it's a central place where we can pull down the things. Email will definitely work as well, but that's a publicly viewable things in a central place rather than managing 20 emails or 200 emails. So, but definitely, if you are blocked because you have mixed mode and you said 8.1 is great, I can't do it here, open connect, add, tell us, and we'll go and pick up. But definitely, it's in our plan. We want to get it done. It's the processes. That's probably going to take until 5 ready for down level before you can yeah, so I mean. <laughs> okay, so that was the intelligent versioning that we have done, and you would notice there was, I think, the. <laughs> I, I, I must say one more thing on that one. Just since I'm, I told you what to do, um, <laughs> if there's. If you're okay <coughs> for 5 and 50 meets your need, that's okay. I know there's a number of cases where they didn't want to upgrade their entire infrastructure to support 5, and therefore they wanted the formal upgrade. So if you want to add any information on that too, that's all useful for us to know. Right. So if 5 doesn't, assuming 5.0 will come and it'll go down level, so if that is not good enough for you, just add that logic like, why do I need 4.0 and why 5.0 is not good enough? it's out of preview, I, I can put it in production, but I can't yeah, afford. It, it might work for some, it might yeah. not work for everybody, kind of thing. Um, so, <coughs> and now, and again, there you will, so right now I'm running uh, the April WMF that you're going to get soon. So you might see some things new, but, uh, and that's okay to see right now, because you'll get it soon. Uh, there are a bunch of things we did in November updates. Um, wherever you have doubt, ask me specifically so you know when, what functionality is coming. We do have a, a blog article already on PowerShellMagazine.org and we are going to put a KBR uh, or a TechNet article as well to enumerate all the changes, so that helps. Um, one thing is when um, we run the DSC or DSC, you send a configuration, DSC engine runs, Every run has a unique ID. And that essentially helps you from tracing and logging, saying, oh, what exactly happened? So I'll just force a consistency check. It's not going to do anything different. But right now I'm not writing to the uh, event logs or reading from the event log. I wrote a separate ETL file. And if I go and look at all the messages from there, you will notice there is consistency job ID, which is same across and what it becomes helpful is when your resource your configuration causes a machine reboot and you say okay after reboot continue it continues and finishes it off before w before the november update the job ids would change and it becomes very difficult for you to trace oh what happened configuration started where did it finish we fix that so even after reboot the configuration id remains the same so you can trace it 
So there is this one way of doing it, but there's a new commandlet, and this is in WMF5 alone. It's not in November update. Uh, get DSC configuration status. <coughs> and essentially, by default, it'll tell you the last DSC operation which happened. It was successful. It was run at this time. It was a consistency check. It did not require any reboot. It was done in a push mode, and the number of resources in that configuration were two. So that's by default shows you the last one, and you can find all of them. And you will notice, I don't have a reboot one here, but if there's a reboot, you will notice that the number will not change. Here, uh, these two are the same operation because I applied the initial uh, configuration and then a consistency check. The timing and order looks reverse, but. Does the status of success mean all, all resources are in compliance? Yes. Um, let me, so I, I ran with, with the way out variable, so dollar status, zero, FL star minus F. If you see here, it will say resources in desired state. So if it fails, you know which ones failed and which ones did not fail. So you get overall picture and then a specific one which failed. So you have resource in desired state and resource not in desired state. So if it fails, it'll tell you which ones. Forgot. And, and actually, I think we have one, which is the last one. So we can just do the last one, which is minus one. And here you have those two. The copy directory failed. So, uh, so that's a cleaner way to find all those things. Definitely, um, one area that we want to improve is it does not show you all the verbose and debug messages at this point. Uh, we want to enhance this commandlet or something similar to say, tell me whether it succeeded or not and show me all the output because it can happen in background through consistency check or through pulse server. For that, you have to go to the logs. Right now, the verbose goes to, you have to turn on the special logs that work and then they fill up in about two days. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, um, so the question is, uh, you have to turn on the special logs and they get filled up in two days. So yes, you have to turn on analytic and debug. Uh, we are looking at all our logs and see all the verbose by default should go to the operational, which is on by default. But yes, those are circular logs. There's a certain limit to them. And then they start rolling over. The, the debug ones, they don't roll over. They just stop getting anything. Uh, there is an infrastructure thing that uh, if a machine gets rebooted, then the analytic and debug gets cleaned up. Can't do much about it. It's Windows event eventing infrastructure, that's how it works. We were surprised and we tried figuring it out, why we do it, can we change it, but. So there you might end up writing to a different ETL file because then you own that ETL file, you created it, it'll have all the history. But is, is there a new event too that gets logged, to the event log, when, it's, when DSC completes and it's a success? Yes, so the question is, does a, a new event get logged? Yes, uh, we were only logging on failures before and after November update, uh, we fixed it, um, I'm not sure if it's November or WMF5, but we fixed it, we said success, we started a configuration, we finished a configuration, so we have beginning and end both. Um, and when you look at this configuration status, essentially it again goes in a store, um, and I can look through all those things. There is a store, again, a CE Windows System 32 configuration. That's the place most of the things go. Uh, we want everybody to use commandlets or provide commandlets to clean up or manage that store because if you use the commandlets then LCM knows something has happened, we log it. If you go manually take ownership and delete files then nobody knows what happened. Um, so if you find scenarios where things are not happening and you have to go and delete files manually, tell us, we'll fix it. Right now the only thing we have is remove DSE configuration document, um, but there are announcements coming. So. This was our previous object. Oh. And if you look at the files, they are one-to-one -one mapping. So. Okay. Um, Another thing is how does DSC handles loading of module? Uh, so I have a, a 
kind of a bad version. It's not bad, but uh, we'll, we'll go and make it a uh, wrong module version. So here you have a environment variable and it just creates some values. We'll, uh, you guys fix the path one yet? So you can change the path more than one. Don't know. <laughs> Question is, have you fixed the path one so you can change the path more than once? Yeah, if, there's a bu path. if there's a bug on connect, likelihood is it's has been fixed. If you did not file a connect, we don't know that bug. Um, so we'll again uh, compile it, load it, compile it, and <coughs> open the MOF file. You will notice a difference, and that is coming in April WMF. Thanks that you will get your hands on next week. Is the module version. For built-in resources, we by default are going to go with module version 0.0. .0. That only happens when you write your configuration without specifying the module version. Because here you said, I don't care about the module version, I just care about the module. And what it helps us is you can write this configuration on V1 of the system. When you move to V2, the module version will change because we add more command list, more functionality, and you're not tied to a specific version. This is something we are going to do for built-in resources alone in this WMF. And sometime later in fall, we start applying this logic for all the resources. So if you don't specify a version, then it means pick the latest version. And which as I said, 0.0, .0 means ignore the version. If you care about a specific version, then you specify it. And that means if you apply it on a different system and the module version is different, then it will not work because you specifically said you want a specific version. So that's a change, and the reason we ran and went with that is we have to update our module with version from 1.0 to 1.1, and like, oh, what happens if I try to send that document on older system? Or what happens if I try to send it on future systems? Because in future, it won't be 1.1, it'll be 1.2. What happens 10 years down the line? It'll be 1.5, maybe 2, maybe 3. So to start thinking about versioning, uh, we said that's the right approach, and that kind of goes with the PowerShell scripts when you say import module. You just say, I care about the module, not the version, but when you really care about the version, then you say import module, module name, dash version. So, uh, so we'll go and actually change the module version from 1 .0, 0 to 2.0, and I don't have a 2.0 on the system. So I'll save it, and try to apply it and you will see uh, error message is slightly better it tells which module and which version was not found so you know oh configuration says 2.0 and I can check what version is on the box oh, it's 1.1 so it makes sense so that's again the MOF file has a version, even though you did not specify it during compilation, it gets over, engine looks at it, and this is common for whether it's a built-in resource or a custom resource. And you'll see more and more of custom resource from the GitHub, and you download, you use it, make them better, and the same logic goes with them. Right now, we don't do the special handling of, if you don't specify a version, we'll use the latest version for custom resources. We're starting slow, and based on how people take it because it has uh, impact which maybe this is the right place to say uh, show it is if you don't use the built-in module because that's how it is if you do it it'll, uh, it's going to write a warning saying you are warning you are loading one or more built-in resources without explicitly Ex importing the associated modules. That's a new warning um, that would have never happened because built-in resources get loaded, but with this Calry model, we most likely will open source that built-in resources, make them better, so you'll be downloading a newer version. You might have side-by-side -side versions. How do you install side-by-side -side on the same model? Question, how do you install side-by-side? -side? This feature has been there in a couple of WMFs, PowerShell modules now support side-by-side. Side. So if you install from the gallery, 
which I did. So let me show you. Um, C program files, Windows PowerShell modules, the executive directory. Here is the version 2.3 version of Active Directory installed. Now you can have 2.4, 3.3. So a subfolder, which is the version name, version number, is there, and you can have multiple versions inside the and same. That works on which version? WMF5. PowerShell version 5. We added that functionality sometime last summer or November, September update, uh, and it's there now. And there are other ways to install side by side by using multiple module path and one version in here, one version there, one version there, which that sounds like a real confusion. Which is a confusion, and that's why we wanted to do this for a long time, and finally we were able to. Um, okay, we are good on time. So this one is uh, interesting one. It's not there in April WMF, but the subsequent WMF will be checked in. I have a private specific version of that thing. Um, let me open up. So here, this is about ordering the question. One of you guys asked the question and I'll cross check as well later on. I have file one, two, and three. There's no dependency ex ex uh, set here. So if you don't specify any dependency, we compile it in the same order that you said, we will run them in the same order. So if this is the configuration, and you try to compile it, oh, sorry. Using mouse is better. So I'll compile it. It generates localhost.mof. Um, let's close the older one. Yes, I did. Ordering local instruction. You'll see it's file one, which is line number uh, 10, file two, and file three. So MOF has in the same structure that you uh, generated your configuration on. If I run it and look at the output, um, there's an event, a specific event, which tells me in what order the configuration will be processed by the engine, one, two, and three. And essentially in the events, um, it's where ID equals four, three, three, two, I think. I have to find the ID number, but there's a unique ID which has this ordering information. So that's one way, and now we'll go and change our configuration and put depends on. So can anybody tell what will the ordering LCM should process this document once you have? It'll do three, three one, two, three. and two, yeah. because one requires three, so before running one, it needs to run three, We'll run three first, then one, and since two is written after one, it'll happen. Oh, okay. So we try to keep the order as much as we can in the order user specified, but depends on gets processed first. So first three will be done, and then one, and then two. Uh, the MOF that gets generated after it, there's nothing different in the MOF. We'll just compile and and we can just do ps edit on the file and again see it's the same order one two and three but now there is this specific depends on here so the document looks the same there's additional data because you said depends on but when lcm processes it it will do in the order three one and two so that's useful information for debugging, for knowing what, what order things happen, so it makes sense to log it, and we are going to fix that. So that's that's why it depends on matters. If you really, really care about things in a specific order, use depends on, otherwise 
there's no guarantee things can change we can change it later on or not uh, uh, for reboot um, there are two changes coming in uh, actually one I already talked about the job ID doesn't change so we'll just look at a very simple and silly configuration which just doesn't do anything but just a script resource with global DSC engine status equals one or DSC machine status equals one which means reboot um, one thing that we want people is to use less of script resources because then your intent and make it so phase happens together difficult to understand this one I can understand but if I get set and all the logic inside here somebody wakes me at 10 in the night and says hey what does it do I have no clue so people use script resource a lot because they're starting that's fine to start but anytime you like oh this is ready ideally you should start with the resource first but if you really need to you can use script for getting a jump start but don't use it as a production scenario demo is fine so on the reboot we'll um, we'll compile it and we'll invoke it and since I'm using the default settings it will tell me hey a reboot is required reboot the system and continue one thing uh, you will notice that was added in November update is there's a new property called action after reboot the default is continue configuration that means if you reboot the system LCM will automatically go and process the configuration document and put take it to completion you can change it to say stop configuration that means after reboot till you invoke it using start DSC use uh, existing or a consistency check happens it will not automatically continue and that allows you to get all the verbose information debug information rather than just go to the log. Question. How soon after the reboot will the LCM continue the configuration? One minute, five minutes, immediately? Oh, the so question is, after the reboot, when does the LCM continue the configuration? As soon as the uh, WMI service is up, it kicks in DSC, DSC engine looks if there's a pending dot .mof because it knows uh, it rebooted the system, it'll go and proceed. So the, you have, if you are doing a active directory domain uh, deployment which reboots the system you don't have control to even log on because it tries to do things and DSC might be busy running automatically so it's a timing issue you don't want to ever take dependency on those even if you are able to catch it once or twice there's no guarantee you'll catch it on faster machines so we talked about um, so there's one property here and another property is LCM state and it tells you, sorry, uh, it tells you that it's in pending reboot state. So you can actually write code against it saying, hey, if it's in pending reboot, I really want to reboot, do a reboot computer, a restart computer, and continue from there. Additionally, there is a LCM details property, LCM state details that we added in April WMF. And essentially, it, it has string. If you are busy, it tells you why it is busy. We need to add more information there but the idea there is it is additional information for contextual reason of your some somebody is building a UI on top of it they can read it and display to the end user and you know what's happening uh, the long term intent is when you are doing pull we know oh it's busy because you're doing a pull request if it's busy it's running a consistency check fill it more and the other thing is all this data is stored so even if your machine reboots or the process crashes so here I'll, I'll try to kill the process uh, WMI process specifically for DSC uh, and I call what is the state my state doesn't change it's still the same we cache it we store it we read it from it once it's loaded we use them one in memory but there's always a persistent store um, the second change regarding uh, reboot is in version one if you call get DSC configuration it'll report against only current dot mof now we fixed it we says if there's a pending dot mof or there's a pending configuration report against that because that's your intent 
at the same time we write a warning saying hey we are running against pending configuration so don't be surprised because if you said oh my i'm 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 create turning on a windows feature and then you apply a new configuration which is file and in the past and it failed for whatever reason you say get dsc configuration says windows feature is configured correctly but that's not the intent since you gave a new document your intent has changed you don't care about windows feature anymore you care about the file that's what we report and we have made some changes in the engine to make sure you will never reach a stage where you have a pending configuration and a current configuration because as soon as a new config as soon as a new configuration comes your current becomes a previous because your intent has changed your new intent is a pending so pending and current will not happen together going forward in wmf5 but that used to be the case before question is it only keeping one previous yes the question is is it keeping only one previous yes right now there's only one previous uh, we have thought about doing n previous and then decide what is the n or maybe 2 3 so if you have ideas suggestions send it on connect will definitely <laughs> make it configurable and then how many files you stay who cleans it up there's all those fun stuff but yes configurable is an easy answer <laughs> i don't know if that's the right answer we will start with the default of 3 and then make it configurable you can change it to 300 20 10 all those fun stuff so i'll just clean up the configuration apply the old hello world so everything is clean Okay. I have two more and let me close couple of files so we have less tabs here to worry about. Okay. So people who have played with um WMF5 there's a new way to write the meta configuration or the engine settings. in version 1 it used to be called local configuration manager you can put with your machine configuration the dsc engine configuration or you can put in separate files but we added a new construct or new attribute called dsc local configuration manager and if you go inside it'll show only the things that are about engine setting it doesn't show you file resource registry in windows feature because they are two separate operation one is about configuring the machine and this is about configuring the engine and since i'm running april wmf or almost april wmf you'll see a lot of new stuff here maybe um at this point nothing looks new but there are new stuff inside some of them uh so we have notion of configuration reporting which is the pull server so where do i pull my configuration from the web one or the smb share one uh resource server web or S so in version 1 you had one pull server which will do deliver your modules deliver your configurations and get all the reports back now you have three separate endpoints it can be on one server it can be on three different servers to say i want to pull configurations from here because i want to control them modules everybody can develop because i trust everybody to write the right things but configuration is more secure stuff and reporting can go to a third place so you can have multiple machines report to the same reporting server <coughs> but pulling their configuration and modules from different locations um and the last piece here is the uh, partial configuration which we'll talk about so i'm going to this typos <coughs> um so here is a way to write partial configurations how many of you have read about partial configuration know what it does okay so essentially for others i can explain a uh, partial configuration essentially allows you to deliver a configuration document in multiple fragments so you can say i own the setting of the os but not the application here is my configuration i don't need to talk to the application guy application guy can do their own stuff as long as there is no conflict if there is conflict we don't resolve it we says error both of them are trying to use the same resource or identical resources and or they're conflicting one is saying firewall absent other is saying firewall present then you have to resolve it yourself and the second piece is partial configurations are not security boundary anybody who's an admin can change these engine settings they are about code coordination map 
so you can coordinate it's like i own base os configuration i'll do this stuff your job is something else you do your stuff and one way you can actually enforce certain things is you can say exclusive resource so the guy who's doing os level management this says only that configuration can use computer management module and that means if any other configuration that is coming later tries to use it it'll be an error saying you are not allowed to because configuration called os layer and there is a configuration which has to match this name is taking exclusive ownership of that only they can use it so there is and then you have the notion of depends on so you can say hey apply them in a specific order don't do website till os layer configuration is done so that helps with the roles and responsibilities people have because different people do different layers of the os applications and tiering couple of them because it's going to open three or four files and it'll be good. Uh, so we can just compile it and run it apply so this is the localhost.meta.mof and we can just apply it and now just let's look at um, the OS layer and web layer there's one So in the OS layer, we are saying that person turns up, manages Windows Center, <coughs> IS and ASP.NET. That's one. Rem see the naming has to match because a partial configuration said OS layer and web website. And in the website, you have all the pieces. And if you remember here, we have dependency that don't do the website till OS is done. So you have dependencies and you have separation. And if we try to go here and um, compile them they get compiled respectively you can publish that's a new commandlet you can say publish a configuration that means it'll just put the file there it's not going to run it so you can publish on 2000 machines and then says oh invoke them together can you do, can you do orchestration along with orchestrator any kind of orchestrator you want um, you can publish it so it just published it says okay document reached there and now you can look at the configuration store again there is a subfolder called partial configuration and there we just publish the website now what will happen if you try to in invoke it we'll say hey whatever is there apply start dsc wait verbose use existing i'm not going to give you configuration it's already there and it throws an error because it says the partial configuration website depends on another partial configuration that does not exist. The partial configuration will not set until it finds the partial configuration that it depends on, which was the OS layer. So if there's only one, you try to apply it, it says, sorry, you have dependency, we have not met your dependency. Um, if, if there are all the pieces there, we merge them into a single document and the same rules apply. If there's a conflict, we throw an error saying, cannot apply because there are conflicts, resolve them. Um, and I'll just reset the meta configuration. I think we are almost out of time, but there is so now I'll use my slides that I created for this session. Um, So this is a very high level view of how local configuration manager works. You have the agent which runs the consistency check. You have various stores, engine status, configuration status, and there's timers which replace the configuration, sorry, which replace the scheduled task. Your call comes in. We have separate configuration manager, module manager, reporting manager. It looks at the right place, downloads things as needed, validates, creates the tree, ordering, merging, and uh, delivering a document, you have three, four ways, push, pull, and now you have a mix mode. Essentially, you can push a configuration and it can pull down the modules, which was not there before. So that's new in WMF5 to say, I can push a configuration if I set my module server, mo module repository server, 
it'll go there and download so that way you can use all we have not completely integrated yet with ps get or powershell get but once then you can download things from the gallery your internal gallery public gallery and says i don't care i know the configurations are there on the machine if they are missing download them but we do have uh, on github uh, two resources one for one, uh, one get other is for powershell get which lets you using partial configuration download modules on your machines and then you can apply the configuration and bootstrapping is still there you can put it in a known location and when machine boot up it can get configured and lastly you have azure resource extension so when you are creating vms in the azure uh, you can tell it dsc and dsc can configure it while machine is getting ready and last is things what are coming to you in april wmf uh, they are they will be in the release <coughs> note but since you guys are here and i'm running wmf4 i thought i'll tell you uh, which is i will not get a chance to demo them but um, i can at least list out i think one of them is very critical which is number 9 run as credential so now uh, resources can run in user context not in system context uh, you have to opt in to say ps dsc run as credential you specify we spawn off a process in that user context and run the resource in that context so resource doesn't have to do anything to get benefit of it there is a work plan to say if resource wants to throw error or warning it needs a way to know whether it's running in a user context or not we have to plumb that pieces we have not done uh, there is support for mammal based help for dsc resources that's the first work we did uh, comment based help will comes will follow it and that's the same thing for uh, classes so classes you can have mammal based help and then eventually you'll have uh, uh, comment based help uh, configuration function when you compile a configuration into morph there was no way to know what exactly is happening under the covers or oh, i had a lot of variables commands what they evaluate to now you have dash verbose dash debug dash warning so you can see what's happening the warning that we write if you don't use import dsc resource you can suppress is using a warning action silently continue duplicate resources so if you have identical duplicate resource that can happen in partial configuration or if you are using composite resource which says install feature is twice it used to be an error now since it's the same thing we say this fine it's not an error we'll run it twice because you said it twice but it's not an error and as you start thinking of partial configurations you will see there will be a lot of repeat because those are stand alone configuration but then you can put them together to configure your system so that that was one class based dsc resource there's a lot of uh, fixes done things were wonky here or there uh, bugs reported we fix them so they are higher quality and almost finished quality for uh, uh versioning we already talked that if you don't specify a version that means use latest version we have doing it only for built in resource at this uh, built in module at this point um test dsc configuration earlier it used to just finish you don't know whether it didn't true or false uh we fixed that bug there was a bug filed on connect says in more verbose message tell me it's true or false we fix that this one small piece still missing there we'll, we'll fix next and then in powershell you have now option to copy file over powershell remoting copy item works with ps sessions earlier it was a problem nobody could do that or you go and read how lee told you how to do it through get content set content now you can just say copy item session to session or from this session file to this and then we can copy over powershell remoting and then ps read line which was in github that's in the product now in windows so you see all those colors and play with that in april wmf there are some things here and there which might not work correctly file bugs we can fix them some of the bugs i think we have fixed most of the bugs that we found internally ourselves but you'll see all these open source project where people have contributed or and then you can go and contribute to the github repository and make it better install module you have another version of ps read line so you'll see ps read line in program files folder of your machine uh, i think i have it here uh, 
this power shall get and I don't know PS Reader and should come maybe I have to check why it's not in WMF it could be just in uh, Windows build it's there so those are the couple of new stuff uh, that you should look forward to in your April WMF there is uh, release notes um, there are some stuff which might not work properly and it's marked as experimental versus stable so things which are stable we think we are done there there might be bugs experimental we are still work in progress and it'll take a couple of more WMFs too any more questions I utilized those extra 15 minutes let me push the button did something like that.